making sure yeah. we're on in our Facebook group. Just gonna reload it. You never know with Facebook and all the tech issues. I feel like yes. I, I'm gonna take you up on your on the suggestion of YouTube streaming. Let's make sure. And I think it's a great way. Um, I'll tell you later more. In just in case we're live. <laughs> we're live. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Spread Studio community. Uh, my name is Carly. Today, I am with Angelica Pompey of Pompey Portraits. Um, Angelica, please take the stage. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about um, what you do, who you are, um, where you're based. Um, yeah, go for it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. Uh, let's talk about it. So who is Angelica? Angelica <laughs> wears a lot of hats. But primarily, I am a boudoir and maternity photographer here based in Jacksonville, Florida. And I have a studio space in the heart of our downtown area. Uh, I have been a photographer for over a decade, but officially like LLC, all the things since 2017. <laughs> um, and so I like to preface that because I tell people you're not a legit business until you do the paperwork and get all you know legit. So <laughs> insurance and all the things. Um, and so, yeah, I've been doing photography for many years. I've done literally everything under the sun from real estate to weddings to portraits to families, newborns. And I have recently re like, um, rebranded in 2021 to focus around women empowerment and photographing women in every season of their life. And I felt like that was a space that was kind of lacking, especially in my Jacksonville community. Mm -hmm. So it is an honor to be serving our women in our community to the capacity that we do with the full service hair and makeup. Um, we do albums, we do wall art, like the whole cop and caboodle. So I tell people we're full service. If you want to get pampered and feel like a badass, then this <laughs> is the place for you. Oh my goodness. I love that. When did you, when did you re rebrand and I, I think Emily is there in the comments so Emily if you want to drop uh, uh, the websites for both your your personal coaching right you yourself and yes Pompey Portraits um, the Pompey Portraits website we were just discussing before this as someone who is uh, a student a forever student of branding your website is beautiful it's very clear and it tells a great story so I just want to give you kudos to that but like tell me about Thank you. why you rebranded like, was it that word we don't want to say? Was it the pandemic? Did you decide not to pivot and settle down? Like, talk, talk to me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I have a coach. I always tell people the coach has to have a coach. Always. So yeah. um, always. And I've always wanted to do education. Didn't know how to exactly kind of pivot into that. Um, unlike a lot of educators, I still practice. I still shoot. I actively am in the business, and the things in the things that I teach my students and my audience are active strategies that are working. Um, and so that's what something I tell people that if you're looking for an educator and before you invest in their product services, stock them. Make sure it's like relevant to today because there's a lot of things out there that you want to make sure that will be beneficial to you. Not something that was like. Pre, like the way I ran my business pre pandemic to now mm -hmm. is totally different. Like, um, so a lot of different things shift in the industry and like in the trends and things like that. You got to stay with the night, you know, stay, stay up with terms, all things. So, um, but as far as my pivot, um, so in 2021, I was had a hard conversation with my coach and I was like, you know, I don't want to work weekends anymore. And she's like, what is the thing that you could do day in and day out? And when you do that, it just like fills your cup. I was like working with women. I love children, but it just children are children. We all know <laughs> you, if you have kids, man, they they do what they want. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like you, little sucker. You sit down right here and smile. <laughs> and I'm getting older. I'm like I don't have the energy for that anymore. And I just like I love the one on one connection piece of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think like when you book us. I tell people like you, when you book us, you talk to us anywhere between four to five times on the phone before you walk in here. 
that's outside of like email communication. So we have like a planning call, we have the consultation call, we have like a touch point call. And then if they have any questions like the week of, they have the free roam to schedule a call with us. Um, so it's a lot of communication, a lot of rapport that we build with one another before they step foot into the studio. Um, and that is very purposeful, especially for what we do. It's a very intimate setting. Um, some of our maternity clients do like maternity and boudoir, like a mix. So um, just like that vulnerability piece is super important to build that that rapport with our clients. So communication is important, which is obviously why we're here today to talk about. Um, but yeah, I love making women feel good because I love to tell this to any woman, you know, we're always serving others, um, but we never serve ourselves and pour into ourselves. So I try to create a space that women can just be still for three hours. Our experience is three hours with hair and makeup that they can just put their phone on D&D and we can jam out to their favorite song. They can have a beverage of their choice, like eat the snacks without the kids tugging at your neck or like husband like, hey, or, you know, the dog's trying to eat the bag, you know, kind of thing. So just really a safe space for our clients is what we like. One of our biggest goals is here for my photography clients. Um, and then into education, this is very a new venture for me, but um, I took the strategies and things that I've learned in my photography business and implemented into my education. So I launched this last summer um, and knowing what it takes to have a strong foundation in the business, I was like, okay, I need the website. I need the branding. I know what my messaging is. I did a lot of pre-work. I spent about a year prior to last summer um, just like, you know, figuring out what my voice, my branding, um, asking for testimonials. I did stuff on the side to kind of just feel what my niche and my vibe was and I really love teaching people the things, the unsexy things about business, which is mm -hmm. strategies, foundation, the things that bring you the most money. Right. I like love to tell photographers, I said, we are really good creatives, mm -hmm. but if you don't have a strong foundation in your business, it's giving no business. <laughs> <laughs> yes uh -huh. that's like that's something that brian our ceo has like embedded into our minds i know as like the employees of sprout but we try to communicate that best to our users that the running a photography business is actually 80 percent business and 20 percent photography and so the point of sprout mm -hmm. at least is so that we can help take some of that percentage away so that you can go back to doing what you want to do and that's photography or even stepping to spaces that like you said fill your cup um that we can take away those those admin tasks those automations the email communications which we'll talk about um because you you kind of mentioned your um your kind of package there and we'll get into that at the end so if you guys are watching i'm super excited about um this and how we're going to talk about how you you create, we talked earlier um, that you just got feedback from a client saying that you have an incredible communication and it's so personalized. So I'm excited to end with that later. So please stick around. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But it's really interesting. I like the fact that I, I feel like for at least doing, we have an industry report and our 2023 one. So for the, we did the, the survey in 2022. And a lot of um, the direction that um, the industry was pulling people was to pivot and to expand, right? And to get mm -hmm. a little scrappy and, you know, don't be so defined into one box. But I think that uh, we are kind of moving, like you said, like um, pick an educator that is up to date with the trends because the the atmosphere and how people are um, buying disposable income, how people are entering mm -hmm. competition, uh, I think it's changing and I think that if you feel like overwhelmed from that still, it's nice talking to you that there is hope that essentially you can settle and, you know, when you find something that fills your cup, I love that you said that, um, that there's opportunity there, right? And then to yeah. stop, which we'll be talking about in a bit. Yes, yes. And I always tell people, like, remember, you're the boss. If something's not working the way you want it and it's just not what it is, you can always pivot. Who is it to say that what you chose as a niche mm -hmm. does not for you anymore? That's totally fine. Like we have that power to make that choice. Love that. Okay, cool. Um, I have, so the first part of this live, I wanted to ask questions about you. Um, I feel like you just like kicked ass at that whole answer. <laughs> Yay. Um, <laughs> 
I was going to ask, like, how do you integrate your passion for empowering women into your photography sessions? But I just feel like that's you. Like, you are just authentically you in that sense. And that's something yeah. that I believe. It's your, like, ethos. So I feel like you don't have to answer that any further. That's so funny. Yeah. And I, and I will add to that, too. Like, the people on my team have similar beliefs. Like, they are all about empowering women. And that was, like, I tell people you can teach skills, but you can't teach character. And if that's something that they just don't organically believe in, I can't teach you that. Like you have to believe like women empowerment is what we're doing here and how we are serving our clients. So everybody on my team understands how important that is for our clients. I love that. I want to talk uh, for a bit about your team just to give everyone a little bit more background and just to see what's possible and then to also segue into our conversation about scaling. Um, but something I, I quick that I want to add to that because you just said um, teaching about character. So something that at Sprout that we um, not abide to, but uh, especially in the hiring process, we follow kind of the three C's of employees. So there's character, chemistry, and capacity. So capacity, you can always change. You know, you can always add and remove chemistry. There's some give and take, right? You can work with someone if the chemistry feels off. And then when it hits character, if there's issues there, then it's not it's not going to work right so mm -hmm. it's the, the whole like um people show you who you are like let them and mm -hmm. it's been a great kind of um paradigm to work in any time any type of business so i um, love that you just yeah said that. but back to our segue so let's get into scaling tell me about your team a little bit first because you kind of have you give this whole package you give this whole experience i love that you give women especially for myself. Sorry, I'm like ranting because I'm just it's I'm okay. so passionate about this. I'm so happy that you do this. As someone who enjoys um, wearing makeup, I don't wear makeup every day because it's a process. And I love actually my favorite part is not going out with makeup. It's that um, the, the time that you do to take that because it's almost like a relaxing art in itself. So the fact that you give your clients that experience, love that. So tell me more about that. Tell me about your team, what you offer the package, and then we'll get into scaling. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as hair and makeup, it's dry hair styling. We have a professional on our team as, to do that. I like to tell my clients, like, I'm the photographer, my associate, I have an associate photographer as well. Our focus is the photography piece. I don't want us to wear all the hats that we don't necessarily mm -hmm. are experts in. I want us to do our thing and do it really well. Um, and so I have a lead artist for hair and makeup, and then I have a secondary artist as well. Um, and so that's like my face fronting team. And then I have back end team. I have a virtual assistant. I have a um, team member that does my SEO and blog writing on my website. And then I have a financial like person that just a C CFO and they do all the things money. Um, and so I wear the hat as a CEO, but also still photographer. Um, in the business. And so getting that hair and makeup part of it is really pampering for the clients because mm -hmm. a lot of the times you'd be surprised how many times people get their makeup done professionally mm -hmm. and it's not often or ever before. And it's more common like that we're seeing it day in and day out. Like people don't get their makeup done professionally, A, because they don't even know like an occasion to do it for or B, like who should they go to? Mm -hmm. um, because it is an investment. And so kind of relieving that for our clients to just come as they are and we'll take the reins from there. Mm -hmm. um, it's a one less thing for them to stress about and it, let them enjoy the experience. I love that. And I feel I, I don't mean to like dictate this conversation by makeup because I feel like what you're saying is applicable in kind of any genre, right? It's knowing I feel like you you know your target demographic, you know your your customer, your ideal customer. And giving them that experience, that thing that, you know, they sit back and they're like, wow, they can actually appreciate that. I think that can go for, um, you know, uh, children photographers, wedding photographers, right? Knowing those kind of those bits that you can offer, I think it's huge. So kudos to you. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We're going to segue. We're going to talk about this skill to success mastermind program that you've put together. Tell me about it. Kind of maybe introduce it. Um, obviously yes. you've scaled now your business. You have a team behind you. You're, you're taking the reins on this educator space. Talk to me. Yes. Okay. Scaling. So this all is foundation based. So as an educator, I was like, you know, where are there gaps in the education community specifically for photographers? Um, and so you find a lot of education on like how to use their camera, how to shoot. Um, like there's a lot of style mm -hmm. shoots. There's a lot of conferences. 
but there's nothing that was specific for business. And so Scale to Success is a 12-week program that where we kind of break down all the meat and potatoes that you need in your business to scale to the next level. Let's say you're a newer photographer, you've been doing this for one or two years, but now you're ready to take your marketing to the next level, you want to implement systems, and you want to just do like the business foundations. Those are the three pillars that my mastermind is on. And so um, client experience overall is what is, will enhance for your clients and for your business and brand. Um, and so this is a mastermind that is geared for photographers after at least one or two years in business. They understand who their kind of ideal client is. They know what their cost to do business, but it's now fine tuning and using tons of strategy to elevate their brand, their business, and taking it to the next level. Uh, and so a lot of the things that we have in this mastermind is like email marketing. We talk about systems and automating workflows, all the things that will like be very pivotal for you to kind of put your energy into other spaces that will generate more, more money. At the end of the day, we want to have a profitable business mm -hmm. that, you know, fulfills our life and pays our bills because that's why we're doing this, right? <laughs> yes. yes, it is. I love it. I have a few questions about the program. So um, I kind of yeah. want to get into specifics. So at week four, you talk about the difference between a gallery or being a gallery giver and a successful mm -hmm. seller. Can you talk to me a little bit about that? Yes. Oh, man, I might ruffle some feathers on this one. <laughs> but um, so for those that don't know what a gallery giver means, um, it's basically like a shoot and burn photographer. So you charge a session fee, and your client gets all of the photographs. Um, that is something that I when I started doing photography, I did that. And then I very quickly shifted into doing um, what they call IPS or in person sales, um, or it can be done virtually. So VPS, um, however you want to do it. Um, but what I found is a lot of people that are gallery givers per se, they were leaving a lot of money on the table. And so what are your clients going to do with 50 photos. Let's be real. Like gonna, they're going to collect dust on the hard drive, right? So like being very intentional on how your clients use their photographs. Are they wanting albums? Are they wanting wall art? And if they, if you are not into products, you can still practice IPS with just digitals. Mm -hmm. um, just setting that, you know, you get X amount of digitals and then per digital rate, or you can get a set or the entire gallery. Um, and that's kind of what I teach in my scale to success mastermind is how to break that down and break that pricing down because I rather charge extra couple more hundred dollars than doing another session. And I can get that from post post sessions of selling my products and services or my products and my digitals. So um, that is being a gallery giver. And I, a lot of my students come in as gallery givers or have tried mm -hmm. to do IPS and it's not working from them. So I really just help them fine tune. And so in the mastermind, they get the entire like behind the scenes. They see a live reveal. They see all the verbiage that I'm using. We they get to hear my consultation calls. Like the IPS strategy starts from the initial email as soon as they inquire, mm -hmm. and you have to have certain talking points about products throughout your process when you're working with your client. So it's not like I sell products. Here's the information. There's a lot of strategy behind implementing mm -hmm. it. So that that week of IPS is so meaty and so good. Everybody's like notes, notes, or like writing their notes. However they do it. And I'm like, oh my god, y'all good? They're like, we're good. Keep going. I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, but you're like, it's it's funny that you say that. Brian was on a live earlier this morning with Imagine. They were actually talking about virtual IPS and how you know, um, in-person sales used to just be the norm and there was no other. And then it kind of got into this um, pattern and rhythm. And then um, again, the word that we hate saying the pandemic happened. It's nice to, mm -hmm. that, to know that people are getting back into that space. And I like your approach that you're thinking it um, through the first touch strategy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that gives people um, huge like alignment and know what to expect. Um, and, and then you're not wasting your time or your energy, right? Because there is, I'm sure in your course, everyone's writing those notes. There's a lot that gets into it, right? But the, yeah. the return on investment is there. So well, that's for sure. Yeah, that's really neat. And also just knowing that, um, depending on your clients sh shoot and burn, or depending what you're doing, you can send out, um, your gallery to family, friends, uh, other people, right. For those favorites, for those individual downloads. Cause you're like, 
what do I do with the 50 photos, right? But um, mm. when it comes down to the couple or the actual client, um, I know personally, I'm the type of person that would want everything, but wouldn't know what to do with it. And so for you to guide me through that and give me options, mm. um, I think it's just fantastic. So it's another actual hat that I think photographers should be wearing more. Absolutely. Than Right? Absolutely. And I always like to tell photographers, especially my students, I'm like, remember, you're the professional. So if you're, you're a guide, you're supposed to guide your client through all of the phases of this experience. They're going to lean on you. And if you suggest like, hey, this, and like, for example, I'm shooting a session and I'm like, this is the one for the wall. Like, it is so oh. good. Do you want to see? So like, I'm just embedding that into their head. So now when they see that photograph in their slideshow, they're going to be like, I want that one. You are, you said it. I was like, I told you. <laughs> These aren't good. So, yeah. So I like to tell photographers, you are the guiding light for your clients. Whatever you tell them, they're going to lean on you and believe you. And obviously don't over here. I tell people don't be selling dreams now, but just be honest with your suggestions and they will lean onto that and you will generate so much more money doing that. Oh, I love that. That's such a good, like, trick to like have in your back pocket um last question and then we can talk if anyone has any questions about the course i know emily you're in the comments if you want to leave we have a scholarship with you actually so um for people to sign up we can talk a little bit about that um but my last question was um talk to me so we just talked about week four talk to me about week eight that covers the marketing strategies outside of social media because again we we talked about we kind of get into these mindsets as creatives of chasing vanity metrics but talk to me about some less talked about tactics you you slightly mentioned email marketing i don't know if that's a part of it but mm -hmm. tell me about weekend. yes absolutely i was just talking to one of my students yesterday about this and i like we're we're not at week yet week eight yet we're on week six so she's like what what should i be doing i'm like hold your horses because we've got a whole like workshop on this. Um, but I would say my top three suggestions for marketing out of social media, people tend to forget they're still in person interaction, mm -hmm. network, 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 get out there. People have to know who's the face behind the business. A lot of us photographers start solo and mm -hmm. that is like the easiest way to market ourselves, showing up, going to events, going to events where your ideal clients will be hanging out. That is key. Don't just go to an event just because. Make sure that it's an audience that you will able, be able to serve to some capacity. Um, so that's the first one. Network, network, network. If you need networking tips, follow me on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I also have a YouTube channel. I'm, I'm dropping so many things on networking because I realize a lot of people struggle with that. Yeah. And I'm kind of like the networking queen in my area. I'm everywhere, everywhere <laughs> at once, but not really. And people are like, you were there, you were there. I'm like, girl, look, let me tell you. <laughs> oh I love that. You're like, I don't know if you watch Harry Potter, but you're like Hermione with the necklace. You're just yes, like that. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so networking is number one. I would definitely say number two is email marketing. Email marketing is something that's very um, uncommon for photographers specifically, um, but it has so much value and potential. Um, and this is like a super random fact because I'm like a statty girl in numbers, um, but it's only 5% of your audience is seeing your social media Mm -hmm. post Instagram and feed 55% of your audience that subscribes to your email list will see that. So my open rate is way above the normal. The average is like 20 to 30%. I have anywhere between 49 to 56% wow. open rate on my emails. So when people sign up for your emails, they want to know about you. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always tell people like email list, just start it. And mm -hmm. if you don't have a sequence, just get people on the list and email weekly until you figure out a workflow within your email provider, like to start because mm -hmm. it's so much value. When the internet goes down, that's not a property that you own. Like if you don't have Instagram, mm -hmm. a lot of people are getting blocked out of their Instagram. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, like you guys need an email list. I don't know. Like if, if people remember when Instagram went down like two or three years ago, people were freaking out. I was like, y'all are going to lose a business if you don't have Instagram. Mm -hmm. I went to my email list and I was like, hey guys, I know the uh, Instagram is down, but we're still connected and people were dying. They were responding <laughs> back and I was like, I love y'all. <laughs> so email marketing has so much power and it is a platform you own. You own your list. So 
that is another one. And then my last one, and this one is not talked about a lot, which I talk about a lot in my mastermind in week eight with my um, students is model calls. Um, those are very easy to monetize off of, and it's a great way for you to grow your portfolio simultaneously. Um, and so you can be very strategic in who you select for your model calls and, you know, have a specific questionnaire to make sure you have an audience and like being strategic on, you know, what kind of things you want to add to your portfolio and like what that can look like. People feel honored when you select them for something so unique and special. And so like being able to elevate that experience. And I tell my, my, my people that my, my students, I'm like, your model calls shouldn't feel any different than a actual session with you. They mm -hmm. still get the full experience. Um, and so, yeah, model calls are something that's not talked about a lot and it is very profitable for me and my business. Wow. Is that, um, I know you, your students get to have that. So of course, mm -hmm. please check out I, Emily in the comments. Um, <laughs> yes. The mastermind link in the comments. Um, but is that applicable to other genres other than, um, like thousand percent. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I say model calls, when people think model calls, uh, spe specifically like newer photographers, they're like, Oh, do people have to be models? Actually, that's part of my requirements. No modeling experience. I want mm -hmm. real authentic, like everyday people to come in front of my camera. Mm -hmm. Um, and nine times out of 10, because the model call is a lower rate. Um, it gives opportunity for those that have been dying to work with you to step in front of your camera. Um, so yeah, this is applicable for families, for people that want to do couples or engagements, um, for portraiture, branding, like it literally across all boards, model calls can be super beneficial for your business and lucrative. That's awesome. Before we move on and start talking about five-star communication, um, I yes. want to... Uh, I feel like there's two points I could talk on, but the first one was networking. So, um, you probably, uh, you probably, you do coach your students through this, I'm sure. Um, but for photographers who maybe aren't extroverted or more introverted, how, what's like one tip or like advice you would give them to get like them out of their shell, right? Mm -hmm. So what people tend to forget with networking, when you go to these events, the person that you're talking to should be doing 70% of the talking. And so mm -hmm. as the person that, you know, you're trying to connect with them, you should be asking questions. The questions that you should be asking are open-ended questions. So instead of asking, you know, are you from, you know, Jacksonville, Florida, they're going to answer yes and no. That's the end of the conversation. Ask, you know, are you from this area? What part? Mm -hmm. And have them elaborate. And then I always tell, follow up with the question like, oh, tell me more. Give me an example, like I follow up that. Um, and so my, like my, honestly, if you struggle with networking, my first go-to question, when I just walk up to somebody and I'm like, hi, Angelica, they're like, hi. You know, I ask them, what brought you here today? Mm. They're like, mm, well, I know such and such and such, and it's just like some sort of connection. And then I can kind of elaborate on that. Um, because a lot of the times, like, it's awkward, you know, like you said, or you're shy or timid. It's like, what do I even say? Mm -hmm. So that's my first question. And then I always follow up with open ended questions um, to just keep the conversation going. Because if you ask yes or no questions, that, that it gets really awkward. Then it's like uh, twiddling my thumbs. I'm like, okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and you also get, you get yes or no answers or, you know, you get the, instead of saying, Hey, how are you? Good. Or it, it just like it leaves the conversation. So I, I love that. Um, I love that tip that you gave. I feel like that's helpful for anyone if you're, you know, introverted, shy, timid, like we said. Um, I love that idea. The the second yeah. thing I wanted uh, to talk about was uh, email marketing. You mentioned it. Um, just people have signed up. I feel like because uh, maybe people are nervous or they associate email marketing with you know, the flyers that they get every week from, you know, Canadian, tire. I'm Canadian. Oh my goodness. Why did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> What's in Target? I don't know if Target has yeah. emails and they, it's like that weekly thing and it almost feels like a burden. But when you have a client or people are signing up for your newsletters, something that you said is they're signing up for you. They're, they're taking interest in you. So being able to tell that story, um, put out a, like a drip campaign, um, you should feel good about it and not, um, in a way where social media feels like it's easier to to post or be frequent 
when email marketing is even more effective, right? In showing mm-hmm. ways. So just love how you talk. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Email marketing, like I said, has so much power. And what a lot of people get stuck on is like, I'm not a writer. Mm-hmm. I am, I'm Puerto Rican. My primary language is Spanish. I tell people I speak Spanglish. My emails are not perfect. And my clients think this is the funniest thing. They're like, oh my God, your email was so great. I was like, yeah, I know I had some numerical errors. They're like, they were perfect. We know Angelica, like Angelica language. That's like the joke around here. Like everybody knows my language because I just speak sometimes like in complete sentences. So if y'all are watching this, don't judge me, y'all. I speak Spanglish, okay? <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's personality, you know, they can see that. And it's like, what I tell people is you're going to get more eyeballs on the email Mm -hmm. than that post. You just spent 30 minutes doing a post when you could just spend 30 minutes on an email that Mm -hmm. could generate you revenue. I sell out of my mini sessions almost every single time through an email. Like I barely gets, makes it to Instagram. And if it does, I only have like one or two spots left. That's awesome. That should always be the, what? comes out right oh my god yeah oh so i love it um okay let's get into let's get into the five star client communication in sprout so first let's walk through how you you've built this client journey in sprout um how did you start where did you begin you you talked about first uh touch point at the beginning of this conversation so Mm -hmm. yeah so what i recommend is if you don't even know where to start with a client journey or what, what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Literally write out step one, what happens? How do you want people to connect with you? They submit a contact form. Step two, what happens when they send that contact form? They get an email. Step three, what's in that email? Step four, are you following up? Are you calling? Like write out every single step that you can. Mm -hmm. And then when you write that out, you're going to see where there's gaps. You're going to be like, wow, I just sent them the initial they initially book congratulations, but then you don't talk to them for five months and then you're sending them a reminder a week before. You're most likely going to have a client to want to reschedule because they forgot. Mm-hmm. So you have to have communication in between there. Um, and so every every genre is different, but every genre can have clear communication, consistent communication. And I tell people I'd rather you over communicate than not communicate at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my workflow for my book clients are is 22 steps which nice. sounds crazy, but it's a lot of communication and a lot of value that I provide. Even after they book me, I point them to, I give them a guide. I point them to helpful blog posts. It's just like constantly in their inbox so they can remember like they have a shoot with me, but not overbearing. Um, and so it just, the workflows are just so important, but in order to create that workflow, you have to know what your client journey is. Mm-hmm. So I always recommend start with the steps and then highlight the things that you need to create. So create the email, create the questionnaire, and then work from there. You'll create those questionnaires and emails first before you start working on the workflow because you need that context before you work on those workflows. I love that. We actually have a free guide. I don't know if it would be applicable, but I love that you said before even going into Sprout or whatever CRM platform that you're using to get it down on paper. So when we redid workflows a few months back to make it more intuitive, um, to make it more visual because we are visual people, um, we actually have a printout PDF to be like, before you even step into the software, write this out on paper because like you said, you could be missing a step. So I don't know, Emily, if, you ha- if you're here, drop the link to the, the PDF for the, it's the workflow roadmap. And it's just a printout. And it just, if you do use Sprout, it helps you connect, like you said, Am I going to write that email? You know, that's an actual actionable. Um, and it just coordinates to what, how, how those things look in Sprout. So when it comes time to actually put it in, that process is seamless. So I love that you just talked yes. about that. Yeah, it's so funny that you say that because I actually brought up that worksheet during when I taught about, about <laughs> workflows. And after that, I think everybody has switched over at that point for Sprout. They were like, "What? okay, how do I sign up for the Sprout thing? Because my CRM is not this helpful. They provide so many tutorials, the Sprout school, like they went down the rabbit hole about Sprout. And I was like, I mean, I wouldn't publicize anything that I don't live by. Like I tell y'all, I live and breathe the Sprout daily. Like if there's no Sprout, there's no business. So (laughs) best, love that, love that. Okay, my next question that we talked about earlier. So you've done this, um, you've written it out on paper, you're ready to put it in Sprout. 
or any other CRM, but mostly Sprout. Um, how do you make those? So you're writing that email. It comes time to actually write that email. How do you make that not feel fake or robotic? Like what tip would you give to build in that personality within that email or within Absolutely. any of the, the steps, the communication? So uh, my love language is GIFs. So I embed GIFs in my email. Almost all of my emails have a GIF, if not a photo, um, to some capacity. And that really allows that, that personal touch. Um, and the GIFs are of me. Like I'm like, it's their initial inquiry email. I'm like, hey, on a, on a computer, my computer on my lap, like waving. So like they initially can see my personality. Um, the second part of that is writing your emails in your voice. If you don't know what your voice is, talk, talk to your phone. Right. Pretend like you're talking to your phone to write this email and you can kind of fine tune it. But my emails are far from formal. Like I'm like, I'm, I wouldn't be like, Hey, thank you for inquiring for boudoir. Uh, the next steps are like, that's not who I am. I'm my, my initial emails like, Hey queen, you're here. And I love this for you. Like I'm ready to change your life. So it just being me. And like, as soon as I get on the phone with me and I hear this all the time, specifically for my like boudoir clients are like what I read on your website and your emails and now talking to you, just all the same cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. um, and so having a brand voice is important. And like I said, mm -hmm. if you don't know what that is just yet, just talk, talk it out, write it out, write it how it would feel good to you. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be perfect or like completely correct as far as like, you know, make sure it's logical, you know, understood, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Oh, I love that. We actually, I hate to go into this topic, but I feel like sometimes as creatives, it's tough to actually write that. And sometimes you, you literally want to just be like, hey, what do I write next? Um, we have AI in emails now, Sprout, Sprout AI. And if you're watching this now, I'm going to tell a, a secret. I feel like we kind of released it, but it's not released yet. Um, we did put AI in questionnaires. And what I loved about it is that something you said, you get to pick your brand voice. So there's formal, there's more casual, there's fun, there's like, you get to actually click it. And then you can edit it. So like you can make it your own. So if you're you're stuck and you know you want to come across more formal or maybe you're a real estate photographer or, you know, you you are um, speaking to a different genre or like you said, it, it's a part of your branding identity to speak this way because it's authentic, mm -hmm. it creates, you know, that expectation that when you go to meet for that session or for that meeting or for in-person sales, it's... Um, that expectation is there, right? So I like the fact that I, I, I have a love hate with AI. Um, but I think it's a good basis tool to, you know, um, put your yourself in there and make sure it's always edited. And it's a good starting off point, I think, for sure. Yes, that was definitely something I was going to say, it's a great starting point to kind of get your wheels turning. Um, I always tell my students, like, don't lean on AI to do the things for you, mm -hmm. use it as a base. And then Maybe add your own twist to it like because mm -hmm. you can imagine everybody that's probably asking the same question you don't want to have the same answer it's like oh my god like this is over here too mm -hmm. <laughs> so add your own twist to it for sure yeah. and super robotic and all of that that stuff I feel like the most recent one I I signed up I'm I, I signed up for a bunch of uh, webinars lives always trying to like improve myself that's something that you talked about earlier um, and I got an email back and it was like Hey Carly, we're so sorry we missed you in that webinar um, here, and it was just like a, such a different. And I know that they're using text fields for it because maybe, yeah. But I just the way that they worded it, it was like they personally missed me from that webinar, and I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry for missing it. Thank you so much for this live, even though I know I'm talking yeah. about automation, but I'm just imagining like someone maybe not in this space. That's like wow, like what a great relationship, what a great connection with a company, right? That they've just yes. built through automation. So. Yes, absolutely. And I like one of the um, products that I have is pre-written emails and all of my emails, I get responses from when I ask a question, they're very intentional and in leading up to that question. Mm -hmm. And so like, for example, one of my follow-up um, like snippets are, Hey, if you're not interested in photography, no hard feelings. Like, just let me know mm -hmm. so I don't, you know, keep bugging you. And people will respond back to that email, like, "Oh my God, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't respond. Yes, I'm still interested." Or, 
oh yeah, I already f- booked a photographer. So like, it's a difference between sending an email and getting the response that you desire from the email. Um, so being very intentional with the copywriting of the email. So if that's something that you're struggling with, um, the, I offer the email templates of 18 pre, pre-written email templates. And uh, we'll probably drop that here in the chat for you guys in a little bit. Yeah. Emily, if you're there, I actually have the window open. Cause again, so the, yeah. um, the email templates, uh, URL link again, so beautifully branded. Um, and where it says the peep, the email templates, like incredible. I kind of just want to walk through it just so everyone gets, um, the idea of what's involved. So you have for inquiry and booking emails, you have an inquiry, auto response, inquiry, follow up one, two, three, proposal deliver delivery proposal follow up one to add your client to your email list and then it goes on to pre session client experience emails book your planning session call your session is booked session reminder one week report before session reminder 24 hours before product ordering emails photo reveal ips photo reveal appointment reminders ips and then you have four more <laughs> for gallery email templates i feel like it, what a great connection you're building through like email right it's yeah just, even just like any of the communication so you have finally final uh, gallery delivery and un- unavailable for requests review for requests and vendor gallery delivery am i missing anything with that no that's everything and that is a ever-growing product so if you decide to invest in that um you will always get like the 2.0 version whenever it gets sent out so um, that's, I'm really big on investing in educators that, like, like I said, you know, are staying up with the times and all the things. So I, I, I walk the walk. Um, so that is something that you will get access to if there, anytime there's an update to that document, um, you will, you will have access to that. That's awesome. I love that because sometimes you go back into those things and you know, they're predated or hard to follow. So the fact that you, um, commit to that with your students, I think is fantastic. Or even with, yes. I feel like that's the emails are available for anyone on the website. Correct? Anyone. Yeah. Yeah. That is for anyone. Yeah. So if that's something you're struggling with if you don't try to reinvent the wheel, you want to copy and paste. These are literally copy and paste templates, like easy peasy. Love it. Okay. Let's talk a little bit. So your client, your five-star client experience is kind of compacted with that, um, the workflow in its sense, it's, it's a beast, right? So workflows in Sprout we'll talk about is, it's slightly a beast too. So what kind of tips could you give to maybe um, a first time user to not get so overwhelmed um, because of its, you know, the capabilities, it's super powerful um, and Mm -hmm. how to apply that, right? So do you, we kind of talked about this before the live, but do you have that exact template in Sprout? I do. So I have my entire workflow in Sprout. Um, And what I tell people is break it down. Start with what are the questionnaires that you're sending throughout the entire experience, not just one Mm -hmm. part, because once you start building, you are like in a flow and -hmm. you're like, oh, let's do the next step. Let's do the next step. And then if you don't have that questionnaire or or email, you get stuck. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, where did I leave off? So go through your your client journey once you've mapped it out and Mm -hmm. say, I need this pre-session questionnaire. I need post-session questionnaire. I need um, a form for them to fill out their product order. I need like whatever those things are that you need for them, right? Build it, create it, and then check mark it. Mm -hmm. Then go into the emails. What are all the emails that you need to create prior to? And then in there, once you have those, then start one, two, three. And I tell people if making the workflow all in one sitting is overwhelming, break it up. Mm -hmm. Do like maybe two or three steps. Make sure you read through it. If you want to test it, test it as you go along. Um, and that's another thing. Once you're done with your workflow, test, test, test. Have your friend's friend, mm-hmm. the neighbor, past <laughs> clients, like whoever you can get, try to break the system as much as possible. Um, that way when you launch launch it, it's not like you're trying to clean up house um, mm-hmm. and everything is like clean slate. Um, so yeah, just literally take your time. I, and this is something that I told my students in my mastermind. I'm like, I teach the workflows at the beginning of this um, cohort because I it's going to take you time to build it. I don't expect you next week to have this done. It's not going to take a week. It's going to take two, three weeks, maybe even a month. Um, and so that's why I teach that at the beginning. So they have access to me to ask those questions uh, because it is, like you said, cumbersome and like, 
overwhelming and it's just a super sidebar. I'm so proud of my students. They <laughs> had, they took it upon themselves to have a uh, sprout party is what they called it. And they did um, workflows with each other and without me. And I was like, I mean, you guys, that's so sweet. Cause obviously they know I'm committed like in all these other places, mm -hmm. but they took it upon themselves to have a sprout party and like help each other. So it just, that is what I want for my students in my in that community is to you know lift each other up, support one another. Obviously, I'm their leader and educator, but then be able to like do that amongst ourselves without even asking. I was like, what if what did just happen? Tell me more, guys. Like I was out of the loop. <laughs> <laughs> That's so rewarding as a coach. I feel like that just goes to show how like fa fantastic you are as a leader and as a coach and as an educator. I feel like number one to to even think of putting workflows first, because I know a lot of educators potentially leave it to the end because it's, you know, it's the meat and potatoes. It's like the heavy stuff, right? But to actually frame it in the sense that, you know, the expectation is not to have the STEM, but the expectation is it's a process. We know it's a process. And to lean on me when mm -hmm. you can, I think it's just huge, like number one. And then number two for them to have the initiative to go and do that, I think is just so exciting. What great students you have. Where are you finding I these? know. <laughs> I know. It's so crazy. I was like, wow, I love y'all. Like, I really <laughs> do. I can't wait to hug them. So my program is virtual throughout the weeks. And then we end with an in-person retreat. So it's going to be like kind of tying the bow on the present, if you will, with them. And I'm just, I cannot wait for April. That's when we have our in-person retreat. I'm like, oh my God, is it April yet? It's almost here. Yay. <laughs> Fine. Can you talk a little bit about that? Just because after this one, you'll have, talk to me about like when the next uh, mastermind is opened. Um, so there's yeah. 12 of the, the virtual. Um, talk to me about like the cadence a little bit. And then we can even uh, chat about the, the scholarship we have with Sprout. And we can kind of yeah. end you know, we have about 15 minutes left. So if you're on live with us, um, leave any yeah. questions you, um, you have. And yeah, tell me a little bit more about that because I'm kind of psyched even just hearing about your process, yes. your students, all of that. I know. So as as a as an educator, I'm always like sharing, sharing, sharing. So every week I'm on social media like, hey, we did this in the mastermind. Hey, we're doing this. Hey, we're doing that. Um, and so one of the components that I added to the mastermind after getting feedback from the ladies um, was we do co-working. So we, I teach a workshop on Tuesday and then on Thursdays we co-work. So we co-work for an hour together, kind of like in silence, holding each other accountable. And then at the end we have like a Q&A so they can ask any questions on whatever they were working on, whether that was the topic for the week that was taught or something like in the past or it, it could be, it's open forum. Um, and then I also offer hot seat coaching. So each of the mm -hmm. students will have hot seat coaching and what we'll do is like, we'll, they'll kind of give me all their scenarios of like struggles, things like scenarios that they're struggling with and anything that they're having like problems in their business with, I'm there to guide them. And then their peers can jump into and give suggestions. Um, I'm really big on like community and community over competition. And I have two students that are in the same space and like they're helping each other and they're like, their clientele is two different audiences and they understand that. And like, they are still, being so collaborative. So I love that. Um, and so, yeah, we do co-working. We meet weekly for an, our workshops are an hour and then we leave 30 minutes for Q and A. And then at the end of the um, weeks of the uh, mastermind, we meet for a three day in-person retreat. And so in that retreat, we're doing a mix of business, fun, um, and just kind of like my goal with them leaving that mass or leaving that retreat is to understand what their next steps in their business are. Mm -hmm. So like the next six months, because this cohort is basically at the beginning of the year, they know what steps they need to take in for their business for the rest of the year to move the needle. Um, because a lot of the stuff does take time, like, you know, email marketing doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. uh, but they understand the strategies behind it and what they can do to implement things. Um, and something else that I shared with them, I told them, like, I know it's, it's exciting to want to implement right away, but take your time, stagger things you will, and, and important to you and your business. Mm -hmm. Maybe email marketing is a priority because you really dislike social media marketing. Like, let's do it. Or vice versa, like you have the understanding of workflows, but like you're tired of being behind the computer, let's do those. Mm -hmm. So everybody, and that's what I love about the mastermind. I'm teaching concepts and strategies, but it's really tailored to the business and like I'm able to guide them in that space. And so at the retreat, we'll kind of kind of wrap the bow 
um, on their on their present of being a student <laughs> um, and really stay in touch. I'm thinking about doing like a post program like connection group of some sort. Haven't figured out what that's going to look like yet. Um, maybe it's like a membership. Um, but a lot of them are like, well, what are we going to do after the mastermind? I want to still like work with you to some capacity. So um, I'm very excited for that. So with that being said, the I've gotten lots of DMs already. They're like, how do I sign up for the next one? Um, this is a program that's going to be once a year. Okay. And we're offering at the beginning of each year. The wait list is available. So if you do go to the Scale to Success Mastermind page, um, you'll have like a pop-up or there's an inline in there for you to sign up for the wait list. Mm -hmm. um, and the wait list will get first dibs. This is application based only. Um, and the reason for that is I want to make sure I have a good fit for each, not only for the program, but for the peers among themselves. Um, and so being very intentional. Um, and so, yeah, it's application based. And then once they're accepted, um, they can submit their um, funding for it. However, that is uh, whether that's monthly payments or pay in full. And usually if you pay in full, there's a couple extra bonuses in there as well. Awesome. And I feel like if you, I'm just checking out the website right now. If you can't wait to work with Angelica, you do have other coaching available throughout the year. So I see that there's 60 minute. Um, yes. And also, I love your naming of all your stuff, like hot seat, happy hour, gold digger, mini me mentorship. So much fun. The whole shebang. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so they can still get into contact with you. And I, I feel like, yes. um, if they're unavailable to sign up or get on the wait list, anything, I, I feel like you still have such great resources and availability. So very exciting. Yes, absolutely. And applications, I'm gonna, you guys are the first to know, but applications are gonna open up in September. So just kind of keep your eyes and eyes peeled. <laughs> reminders, set the reminders. I feel like also follow, um, I, I think Emily's still here. I, my computer on this side is like frozen, um, but we'll put your Instagram links, follow you on Instagram because I'm sure that you're going to send out reminders. Too. Yes. Uh, but yeah, put in your calendars. This is so exciting. Yes. Yes. And then I'm, I'll talk a little bit about the scholarship. So yes. the scholarship opportunity that we did with Sprout was absolutely incredible. We had so many applicants. Um, and this is an opportunity for someone that was interested in the mastermind, definitely was something that they wanted to invest in, but didn't have the funding to do so. Um, and so with this collaborative um, scholarship, it granted someone complete full access to the entire mastermind. Um, and so that was a blessing to them. Uh, they're, they, every time they're like, have a win they're like i'm just so grateful to be here mm -hmm. um so so much gratitude for that student and i'm just honored that i have vendors in my space in the education space that support me for that mm -hmm. um because i'm very big like i said on community and able to serve i'm here to serve 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 I, like i said this mastermind is my one big kind of ticket item as far as like working with me and getting like super like get your hands mm -hmm. dirty to kind of build go in your business there's other ways to work with me but this was a big deal um for me and for my 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 students um, for those that applied. So um, I'm honored that Sprout said yes to this opportunity and we were able to share that that gratitude with another student. Us too. It's It's been a great partnership and it's just, it's rewarding. I'm, we're not even in the room, but it's just even rewarding listening to you um, and your experiences with your, your students. So that's awesome. So Thank I'm, you. I'm going to look quickly through if anyone has any comments but we can wrap this up this will be available for a live on replay we're going to send it out to you you can send it out to your students as well if anyone wants to Yay. um uh re the live there were so many good tidbits in there you you gave a lot of trade secrets and uh, again like Thank you so much for your time this is just absolutely fabulous we're gonna have all your links to everything Yes, absolutely. And if you are a Sprout user, I like to tell people, yes. just try it. Try it, try it, try it. I used many CRMs prior to the Sprout. And when people say this is a CRM specifically for photographers, they are not lying. Like all the things have been thought of from gallery delivery to if you wanted to do in-person sales or virtual sales, emails, like all the things, invoicing is all in one place. and for somebody that is very busy like me, 
and to just be able to log in and have one login to one thing. I'm like, okay, where, where are we at today? Mm -hmm. I have that access at my fingertips is literally been life changing. I can be out and about and I get the kachings when I'm like, oh, living my best <laughs> life with a margarita. We're like, yes. <laughs> so if you need, uh, if you're interested in Sprout, or you have any questions about Sprout or anything that I talked about today, DM me. I'm an open book. I'm here to serve you um, because I remember what it used to be when I first started my business or I had questions and I didn't know where to go. So I will be that resource for you. Amazing. And I, the comments just loaded for me. We, we use Ecamm to like stream in uh, for Facebook. It's always, we love being a tech company and the tech never working for us, but everything is loaded. Emily has all your links. Uh, you also, if you're not a pro user, you can get 20% 20, uh, 20 off with Angelica's link that what we have, it will be in the description of the YouTube and it's in the comments of this live. Um, and it's just, it's just trysportstudio.com uh, slash Angelica. Mm -hmm. So you can go to that to get your 20% off. Um, the comments that were in there, we have Shanika in the comments. What's up, Shanika? I love Shanika. She's fantastic. Um, just ta talking about how awesome you are and how awesome Sprout is, how she loves a good workflow. Who else did we yes. have? Yes. She said thank you for sharing the tips um, and for sh sharing in general um, to help guide students and explain the why. IPS has been more beneficial in person versus virtual for me. We're hearing that like... Um, I feel like this is like the third day in a row. I've just heard that this week. So definitely a trend to look out for if you're not doing that. Um, again, we have Chelsea who's in here saying, oh, she's talking about the makeup and confidence. I'm um, having that a part of the package um, and also shared a heart. We had a, a user giving us some claps. So that's if you guys love it. In their comments. It was fantastic spending this hour with you. And yes, absolutely. Kudos to everything you've accomplished. Honestly, Thank like, you. we're like, you're wearing so many hats, but like, honestly, hats off to everything that you've accomplished and what you've been able to scale. Um, it's super rewarding, even just talking to you today. So. Thank yes, you. thank you so much. I'm honored. And like I said, guys, if you're on the fence about Sprout, slide in my DMs. Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Okay. Bye, community. Thank you so much. Bye.